Besides determining whether to adopt organizational policies and procedures, a company must also determine how to organize itself for success in entry to foreign markets. Let's take a look at forms of global business. When companies produce products in their home countries and sell those products to customers in foreign countries, they're exporting. Exporting is a form of global business and offers many advantages. It makes the company less dependent on sales in a home market and provides a greater degree of control over research, design, and production decisions. Though advantageous in a number of ways, exporting also has disadvantages. The primary disadvantage is that exported goods are subject to tariff and non-tariff barriers and could substantially increase the final cost to customers. The second disadvantage is that transportation costs can significantly increase the price of an exported product. When an organization wants to expand its business globally without making a large financial commitment to do so, it may sign a cooperative contract with a foreign business owner who pays the company a fee for the right to conduct that business in his or her country. There are two kinds of cooperative contracts, licensing and franchising. Under a licensing agreement, a domestic company, the licensor, receives royalty payments for allowing another company, the licensee, to produce its product, sell its service, or use its brand name in a particular foreign market. A franchise is a collection of networked firms in which the manufacturer or marketer of a product or service, the franchisor, license the entire business to another person or organization, the franchisee. Franchisors provide franchisees with training, assistance with marketing and advertising, and an exclusive right to conduct business in a particular location. Companies forming strategic alliances combine key resources, costs, risks, technology, and people. The most common strategic alliance is a joint venture, which occurs when two existing companies collaborate to form a third company. The two founding companies remain intact and unchanged, except that together they now own a newly created joint venture. Approximately one-third of multinational companies enter foreign markets through wholly owned affiliates. Companies used to evolve slowly from small operations selling in their home markets to large businesses selling in foreign markets. Furthermore, as companies went global, they usually followed the phased model of globalization. Recently, however, three trends have combined to allow companies to skip the phased model when going global. First, quick, reliable air travel can transport people to nearly any point in the world within a day. Second, low-cost communication strategies such as email, teleconferencing, and phone conferencing via the internet and cloud computing make it easier to communicate with global customers, suppliers, managers, and employees. Third, there's now a critical mass of business people with extensive personal experience in all aspects of global business. This combination of developments has made it possible to start companies that are global from inception. With sales, employees, and financing in different countries, global new ventures are companies that are founded with an active strategy.